Just quickly, a couple of guys to stand up. You saw that Cliff ended his career in the ABA with the Dallas Chaparrales. Well, who found out about this award but the owner and the broadcaster of the Dallas Chaparrales? They're here tonight. Max Williams, the owner, and Terry Stembridge. Where are you guys? Stand on up. Came in from Dallas, Texas. And you can see that fantastic ad they put in the program with him in the uniform of the Dallas Chaparrales. Also, he's not big number nine, big blue. Is Bob Pettit in the crowd? Stand up, Bob. And Al Ferrari in the table full of hawks. Gene Kerner. Thank you for coming. Well, we are proud to induct into our Hall of Fame Cliff Hagen. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know the uh, evening is getting long when your segment comes up on the screen and people go to the bathroom. <laughs> I didn't take a water pill either. <laughs> I needed to. The economy must be awfully good in St. Louis. Don't any of you have to go to work tomorrow? <laughs> First, I'd like to thank Greg Mersack and his committee for making all of this possible, unbelievable. Greg is obviously a man of vision and optimism. My congratulations to all the other enshrinees, past and present. It's good to be back home. Yes, this was my home for 11 years during the golden era of professional basketball in St. Louis. I arrived here 54 years ago, a six foot four inch college pivot man with a $5,000 contract, only payable if I made the team. How insecure can you be? Fifty-four years later, I return today with a wife I've been in love with and married to for 56 years. Four kids, their spouses, grandkids, their spouses, my minister and his wife, my Dallas Chaparral buddies. I was a player coach down there and a host of significant others. Three of our four children were born here in St. Louis. I feel blessed and enriched beyond description. Four of my first six seasons here, the Hawks battled the Celtics in the finals each year for the NBA championship. My first year, 1957, we lost to the Celtics in the seventh game in a double overtime by two points. That was Boston's first championship. They had never won anything before. Unfortunately, the Hawks hadn't won anything before either. The next season, 1958, we brought the first and only NBA championship trophy to St. Louis, winning at Keele Auditorium in six games. My roommate, Bob Pettit, scored 50 points in that championship game, a record that still stands and might never be broken. An unbelievable accomplishment. I did not know until Greg wrote his book a two, two couple of years ago about the St. Louis Hawks that I was actually the leading scorer for the entire playoff series against the Pistons and the Boston Celtics averaging 27.7 points per game. Our announcer had never mentioned it, and certainly it was never mentioned by our owner, Ben Kerner, at contract time. <laughs> I think I got a whopping $1,000 raise. Today, players with similar stats are making $15 million a year. 
that's more, and some of them are making more in one game than our entire team's play, payroll for the entire year. You hear what I'm saying? They're making in one game more than our entire salary of our team for the entire year. Were we underpaid? Are current NBA stars overpaid? Could we play now? <laughs> Hell no. We don't have any of those damn tattoos. I think Bob Pettit and I are the only two Hawks that played their entire NBA career with the Hawks. It was a very special time and a very special place, which will always be beyond special to me as, as long as I live. 